Yeah? Okay. Well, greetings, agents of change. We are joining you from Naples, Florida. The <laughs> I thought more of you would know that. <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted to join you tonight um, live as we go through our two-week Transform Asia trip, which I think beyond a shadow of a doubt exceeded our expectations. Big time. Big time. Big time. Yes. Big time. So we wanted to share with you because so many of you support us not only financially but with your prayers and everyone that's been a part of executing the curriculums, whether it was editing or the design or the graphics, um, you know, this fruit is yours as well. So we all partake of it. Um, so it all goes to all of our accounts. It's not just me and Xavier or Deja because we're the ones that were on the trip. So I just want to make that very clear for everybody behind the scenes, everybody involved, that everybody has fruit from this experience. But what was most satisfying to me was truly seeing the fruit of it because it's so hard sometimes you sit in Naples and then even through the pandemic and you know Debbie in the office for years in the corner without a window <laughs> in that <laughs> office over there at the old MHK just chugging away and Brittany as well and a few people and to see the fruit of it was beyond because of the school of influence still alive um, a couple we met were married because of the school of influence because they met each other, they got their vision. She was like, okay, a man with a vision, check. And now they're having a baby. They came to meet us at the airport. Yeah. At three in the morning, there was a send off team. Wow. Yeah. Like, you don't get that in America. Mm -hmm. They were like, you're leaving. Mm -hmm. We're going to come send they you all off. all get together. It was unbelievable. Yeah. It was unbelievable. So, we wanted to share some pictures and share with you our experiences. Um, and we're going to start at the beginning. First off with Singapore, and we have some connections there. I know it's kind of hard to see on the live streams, but we have some connections there. Um, there we are headed over. Why is this not moving? You're playing. I'm playing it. I wasn't playing it. It's supposed to just click through. I'll just leave it like this because it, it wouldn't go through. There we go. It just got stuck. Oh, it gets stuck on that one. So this gentleman in the middle with the blue shirt on, his name's HH. I met him seven years ago. Debbie and I flew out to Dallas to meet with him. And he's connected with Dr. Jerry Horner, which many of you may know. He was Dr. Miles' Bible teacher at Oral Roberts University. So he connected us with him. We flew out to Dallas. And we told them I was creating the School of Influence. And they said, well, that's great, but we need something for the marketplace. We need leadership marketplace. And I said, well, that's on the list. I'll get to that one day. That was seven years ago, because <laughs> Shiloh was just born. Mm -hmm. So now we were able to present it to him in our, our layover in Singapore, and as well as the School of Influence. So the beauty of this is he is retiring. He's 80-something years old and he started his network 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And he's giving us his network all over Africa, all over Asia. He's like, listen, I'm too old for this. It's not mine. This is what God has done for us and I want to share it. And now you're presenting these materials. So he's created a network to disciple people for the past 40 years, wow. all over. Mm -hmm. Massive. And so this is his successor on the on your left here who he's going to be succeeding him this year so i call them moses and joshua <laughs> and they came to the airport to meet with us and they said we need this and that's what they asked me to do was the authentic leadership yep. so we had a very good meeting with them i got to be the media person <laughs> deja was our photographer extraordinaire we later on that day flew into Davao City, which is also called the fruit basket of the Philippines. <laughs> and let me tell you, there's no fruit 
on the planet compared to what they have. No. I came and ate mango today. I'm like, this isn't mango. What is this? <laughs> and it's organic from <laughs> food and thought. <laughs> and I'm like, this isn't what mango tastes like. I know what it tastes like now. I was in the fruit basket. <laughs> Listen, I had mango steam. We had Dorian. 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 Dorian, Dorian. Which smells like pass, hell, tastes hard like pass. Yep. We Black had these fruit. fruits, snake skin fruit, the, the this hairy skin. fruit. Yep. But it was so exotic and they were just but it was so, there was this grapefruit, but it's not grapefruit. Yeah, it was, that was sweet. Really it's like if I ate the whole plate. Was not sour and it's more dry, but, but it, it wasn't tastes, grapefruit. But it, it tastes, tastes like grapefruit. grapefruit. But it doesn't taste like grapefruit because I don't like grapefruit. But it yeah, looks it's, like it. It's like a. Yeah. I don't even like Very grapefruit. Exotic. It was amazing. That's why it's hard to describe because. So you this isn't the like, fruit. Even the other islands didn't have the fruit. Davos did. Yeah, because they have fruit that no one else has in the world. Yeah, it's the fruit basket. Fruit basket. All we ate was fruit. And by the way, we ate all the time. If I wasn't teaching or we weren't on the we're stage eating. or doing work, eating. we were eating four, I kid you not, three, four, five meals a day. I felt like every time we blinked, I was like, we're eating. There was more like food. And they would have a lunch, spread of dinner. food everywhere. Pick it all. We ate so much and I lost weight. Yeah, I didn't get fat at all. It's like no. going to Europe. You eat the pasta, the bread, and you lose weight. Yeah. It's just our food is so And Trista is very adventurous bad. with her food tasting. Well, you you're know, very... if you're going to go, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. I mean, you got to try it. Oh, yeah. I just yeah. think you're not that adventurous. <laughs> I'm not at all. <laughs> 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 yeah, because I don't think I was that. Like, yeah, I'll try it. Yeah, I'll try well, it. Well, the fruit, yeah. yeah. But not the shark fin. No. You lost me at shark fin. <laughs> just said, no you lost me pass. at cow's blood. Okay, let's yeah. not. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. All we had them, and now they're wanting <laughs> to go, and now they don't. <laughs> so I told them I love coconut water. So here they had fresh coconut water for us all the time. Um, so they rented a little mountain villa, and that was our first night to. Um, we had been flying for two days at this yeah. point. So we were able so. to acclimate up in this mountain. I don't know why this, this isn't working. And we acclimated up here, and you just looked down upon the city. It was so pretty. The view, it was just very nice. Like yeah. it was the whole view, it was like all mountain, yeah. the whole view of Davao City. Yeah. And we were like in our own little secluded area. Can they and hear? And they had like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they should be here. Okay. Yeah. Um, they had this nice, I tried to capture the view that we had. Yeah, you can kind of see it here. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They would give us fresh watermelon. Juice. juice just blend water and mango milk. all I drank was watermelon juice and mango juice yeah. or shakes they made them shakes I don't know what they put in them but they, they were, were amazing just everything was fresh just yes I think it's in their fertilizer their soil it has to be because I think we have sand here in Florida so well they have the second sand. best water in the world yes because we're like we want mountain spring water please yeah. they're like, and they're like why they're we have like, the best Water. The best water. We're like, oh, mm -mm. okay. That's why the fruit's good. We thought America had it all. Okay. No, we yeah, didn't think that. Good. You thought that. <laughs> I didn't think that. So then, um, here we are, just chilling we that couldn't, first day. We couldn't day. get to the mountain resort unless you had a very skilled driver who knew how to dr oh, drive yeah. an all-wheel four by four. He gave a new definition to four by four. It was. Now. A dirt road, super steep. It's more like a dirt ditch. A dirt ditch. You have to go up. Slow. I mean, you're like, you gotta go slow. You're on Low. rocks. It, it was, was like unbelievable. You can't. Not developed at all. No. I was like, what did we get ourselves into when we were at night in the truck going up? And I go, are we even gonna make it? Is this truck gonna make it? And we finally get up there and I'm like, it's beautiful. So it was worth it. Getting up there is yeah. a challenge. It was worth it. And then. Um, Shern, who flew, Shern is on the far right. He's our mentee up in Manila, the different islands. So he's been part of School of Influence for a long time. So he flew and was on the trip with us the entire two weeks. And then that's the two pastors that sponsored and brought us over there and set up everything and took such good care of us, Pastor Lori and Michelle. And so they all wanted to be baptized because they'd never been baptized in a proper kingdom school of thought. So we did that up in the mountains. Very special. Then 
The next day, we went down into the city and we had our two-day symposium. And these are some of the pictures. But it was funny because <laughs> when you guys were texting me, okay, come up, it's time to start. And I walked in the room and everyone was like, yay! Like, Tristan's here. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And yeah. it, was, it was shocking. Like, they were so happy we were there, so grateful we were there, and they were so hungry for the kingdom. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah. But it was shocking to me. Um, well, the full greeting came before you even hit the doors because yeah, we they like, thought you were with me. So as soon as we arrived, it was this, like, grand entrance. And I was like, Trista, where is Trista? Where is Trista? I was like, Trista, get in here now. And then they were kind of like, okay, and and, 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 and then you came in and it was like a whole thing. I was shocked. Like they just handed me the mic and I'm on stage and talking so like, I, go. I didn't even know we were starting. Yeah. It yeah. was, it was something just else. hundreds of people in this room you walk in and they were just like waiting. It yeah. I had no, I wasn't quite prepared for that. So <laughs> it was nice. We used all the materials we used from our symposium. We mm -hmm. catered to them. And they sat there for two days and we did the workshops. This is probably a dinner in the evening. So this is at the hotel. We stayed at the hotel and they gave us the books. Did you bring a book? Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they customized oh, yeah. so these books. They customized these beautiful notebooks. Pastor Robin. Yeah. They have quotes and in there. Like the shop, right? they yeah. The shop. yeah I'll pass it they put quotes in there from like Dr. Miles and things I've said, and it's like a monthly planner. I mean, it's so nice, Debbie, yeah, that once was you really see cool. that. Okay. But every, every night was like this. Every night was a meal that we share. Every breakfast, every, every breakfast, lunch, every, every meal dinner. <laughs> was like this. <laughs> yes. um, where they just, they, they wanna learn, they want to hear what you have to say, what you have to share, ask you questions, hear stories. And um, it's just amazing, like, when just people just want to pull from you, pull from you. Mm -hmm. And um, they literally... They pull from you. They, I don't want to say they exhausted us, but we were really tired every day. Oh, here's day two. <laughs> okay. Day two, we had a workshops. Mm -hmm. Okay, by the way, Deja did amazing on her workshop. She did You Incorporated. Yep. Mm -hmm. But longer. Yes. Yeah. Because we had more time. We, had we three made hours. it. Yep. Three hours? Yeah. Almost two. Two two good yeah. hours. Yeah. And then Xavier did Influence in the Marketplace. Influence in the Marketplace. And then I did the, the vision. vision. Yeah. But what I want to say, oh, I'll get to in a minute. Here's Blessel and her family. They came from oh, Japan with the, the children. We gave Blessel. them the award. And they were there the whole time. She Blesso may be on. Blesso, if you're so on, girl, we hey, miss hey, you. Hey. And then we had a, a graduation for everybody that had gone through the School of Influence. Oh, yeah, that's Daisy. How'd you know? You recognize her. That's Blesso's mom. Look at you laughing. Yeah. You're like, okay, let's hurry up. <laughs> take it, take it. You guys. <laughs> oh, so that was great. We had a graduation. And there's everybody that attended the symposium. Um... Oh, and look at look at what they gave Xavier. Do you see what he's wearing? Yeah. We call him, now he's an official bishop. We call him. <laughs> 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 they coronated him. Yeah. But before we move on, I want to say there's not a good picture. What? Hold on, hold what? on. Oh, here. Okay. Can you see this? Up there, up there with Xavier. Mm. Let me tell you. He, for the first time, that was your first time publicly speaking, I would say. Yeah, publicly. In that. Like that, like a symposium that. type thing. He was a rock star. I was like, <laughs> who is that guy? Me and Trista were like, I was what? like, who is that up there? It was amazing. He took on a whole different person. He was so natural and comfortable oh, and yeah. like he owned the stage. Oh, yeah. And I'm like. I cried. I was like. I know. I go, oh, my God, I'm so it was wow. amazing. Like, we're not over-exaggerating, because no. I, I don't do that. No. And he came down, and I'm like, Xavier, what happened? Who are you? <laughs> it was 
amazing. I was beyond like, authentic leader. Beyond, yes. I don't want to say that I didn't think he had it in him, but I had just never seen that before. Right. And it just it was blew, amazing. Blew us both away. Oh. Like it was, it was fun. It was fun, wasn't yeah, it? It was fun. Yeah. But then I said, I want to warn you, this is an easy crowd. Yeah. <laughs> like if you can do it anywhere, this is the yeah, easy stuff. Easy. They were all they were, primed. They were good. Are you skipping around? I did everything in no, order. No, I already went through all of them, but I wanted to find a picture of Xavier teaching. Oh. Oops. So don't worry, I'm right there. And then we had, what did you say? Breakfast, yeah. I'm sure, or something. So it was a nice hotel we had the conference at, and they put us up in, and we just stayed there. Oh, I think I have day three or four. And then. This was actually a session to the private, to the leaders of the church, the theology of Jesus. And so, all we did was eat like this. And then so. more food, wherever oh, we went. Eat more food. Yes. 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 It's crew. And then Basically, the next day, oh, you didn't put the pictures of the family in. Of course not. The family. That's down. That's no. It's that's down. this day. That's okay. All right. It's We'll get to that. So the next day I had this amazing meeting with this family that I was like, why are you guys having me meet these people? I don't know them. So there are seven siblings who lost their dad. And okay, I'll get to that then. Yeah. So then that night we had the business and leadership symposium. So we taught business principles and you're looking Hawaii 5.0 yeah. with your <laughs> like Magnum PI up there. <laughs> He was rocking it. Oh man. And he did a great job again. And this was for a lot of people that haven't been through the School of Influence. It was yeah. they wanted kind of an outreach to reach people that weren't part of their they don't even like to call it a church, it's more um, home church. Home groups is what they have and it's a like lot of them. They have so yeah. they've got like Pastor Roy and Michelle and they've got like their their leadership team kind of like our you know, different community. themed groups and then everyone has their own little ministry group so like yeah. a manager huddle the youth a media and everyone knows like what their wheelhouse is yeah what their purpose is what they're there to do and they all work together but all the mentees under pastor roy and michelle already have mentees yeah so when i went around and took pictures at symposium you know they were like oh you know this is this is our mentor and that mentor is one of pastor roy's leadership people so we already saw three generations of mentoring yeah. happening and we're like oh my gosh they're all they, doing it right they're just doing it all yeah. the things you're supposed to be doing they're doing it they're yep. discipling yeah. But the people want it. Yeah, they want they it. They all want it. They're hungry for it. They they want the mentorship. They want They're it. They're hungry for really it. Bad. That's the yep. difference. That's the difference. Yes. They want it. Yeah. So. so that's that. And then we were leaving. There was these people I met. They they drove four hours yeah. to come. And, I mean, you know, it. these people sacrificed a lot to come to these meetings. Yeah. Um, that's who I talked to um, towards the end of the night because they, yeah, because... The ones that came four hours? Yes. Yeah, because they're done with the church. Yes. They're like, you know, we're yes. done. You have any like tips? I'm like, yeah. And then they just sat there. And yeah. Just, just they're like, okay, okay. It's yeah. like, it's for you guys. Yep. You can start here. Yep. Yeah. Um, of course, we had our dinners in the lobby. More dinners. <laughs> more food. See, here we go. The family. Oh, so this is the family. Okay. And so one of the girls. None of these go to church, right? Catholic is the predominant yeah. religion there. Yep. And the one girl in black in the middle, she's heard some of my teachings. She's fairly familiar, but not too much. And she wanted me to come in and bring the family together because they can never agree on anything since their dad died six years ago. And they all have this empire, hospitals, vocation schools. Their dad's name is on it. He was a well-known politician but they don't agree with anything and they don't know what to do and they can never even come together to meet anymore because they're so mad at each other. So I'm like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. Why, why are you calling me? Like, you know, so, but, so when we walked in this room, I'm glad Xavier was there to witness it. The man in the striped shirt was sitting at a different table and didn't even want to come sit down with us. And he had a mask on. He's like, no. So we sat there for a half hour and they were trying to get everybody gathered. Everyone's yeah. late, Philippine time. He didn't want to come. And I'm like, why am I here? Like, and I was basically, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to say to them? 
and what should I do, what should I say, and I knew always tell your story, and we could connect because of my family. We have things in common and their family. And by the end, I kid you not, half of them were crying. <laughs> This man sitting at Took the table with off. his mask off, leaned in, everyone's leaned in, and even the guy on the end here, he's a sheriff in, in the town, or a providence of it, he's taking pictures of me sitting at the table. I saw him, <laughs> he was like, <laughs> and I'm like, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. Not like me, but the Holy Spirit. And by the end, they all ordered my book on Amazon. Yep. Figure it out. Right there. And it's all kingdom in it. And so it was honestly one of the highlights of my trip. It was a good one. Honestly. It was a good I wish I could share more yeah, about it, it but name. it was amazing. Yeah. Oh, and then Blessel and the family want to baptize. So we baptize two generations. Yes, her parents, her parents and, and her and her husband. Yep. So that was and good. And watching on Instagram. Is she? Mm -hmm. She and said that they were also impressed by you as well. <laughs> The oh yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so then this night we had to wake up at 2 a.m. to yeah. go to the airport at 3 a.m., which you didn't show those pictures. <laughs> Sorry. There's a very good pictures at 3 a.m. I have a hundred slides, Trista. In the 3 a.m. And we prayed for some of the people at the airport. They send off. And they send off. We took off at four. We landed at six. There's 14, pe 14 million people that live in Manila. So you have to fly in the middle of the night to avoid the traffic. Otherwise, you'll never make it to your destination. Like Los Angeles and New York together on steroids. But 14 <laughs> million. Like and there yeah. was like 40 million on this island and 14 in the city or yeah. 18 or something. It was crazy. It's a lot. So you fly in the middle. Like they had middle of the night flights all the time. And I'm like, we, we don't really fly at 2, 3 a.m. Yeah. like you guys do. But there's so many, so many people. people. Asia. So wow. that was six. So we got at six. Got to the hotel about eight. And Freshen up, go teach. we had breakfast. And then all day I had to teach <laughs> the hoteliers. Mm -hmm. So this hotel chain, they this company owned, they want me to train their managers. So, you know, you start off with a bang and then you have lunch. Now remember, this is marketplace. So I don't say Jesus. You don't say Holy Spirit. You don't say I think I said God once or twice, or yeah. creator. Like creator. Once, and I was like, where are we going with this? Creator. <laughs> well, by the end, I was getting bold. I was comfortable <laughs> by the afternoon. And then some of my, so my computer crashed oh, after yeah. lunch. So I have my backup thumb drive. I put it on hers, but I hadn't edited the slides. So some of them said Jesus and had scripture in red. Sure, all right. Get up, uh, so get I, was, I left it up long <laughs> enough for them to see it, but I didn't say it. And then I go to the next slide. So that was kind of fun. But at the end, they all bought the books, Authentic Leadership. A lot of them bought the Figure It Out mm -hmm. books. Mm -hmm. And everyone, wherever we went, they had to have your picture taken. They had to have group pictures. They, had to have, their books they have to have books signed. Yep. And um, yes. this is the manager of a few of the hotels with his chain that. that put us up in the hotel in Davo City and the conference for free. So, and he's been trying to get us in this hotel yeah. chain. So, should we tell him about what happened this yes. night? Yes, <laughs> we should. What? That was this the night? promised land. Oh. Promised land. <laughs> that was the pilot. Did you put pictures? I did not. Okay. Because I wasn't sure if we were going there. But. So, we had a great time with the hoteliers. <laughs> but this hotel where we did this training at, you go yeah. back to the room, the windows don't open, they're whited out. It's like, it makes a, a super eight hotel look like three, four, five star. Yes. And I'm like, but we've been up since 2 a.m. I taught all day. We hadn't showered in a week because there was no hot water. We right, Good. right, we true. We water. had cowboy showers and cold water yes. showers. <laughs> Which no one's complaining. We, we were totally rolling with it. So we were stinky and tired, yes. but we were full. We ate but so we good. Were energized. Yes, we made it. But then we were like, so at the end of the day, it's four o'clock, and Xavier's like, you know, Tristy, you're gonna go to your room and rest before we go to bed. And I go, <laughs> no, don't, don't send me don't back. Don't send me back to that room. <laughs> 
and all you want to do is go to bed. Right. There was no. Just it just like, let's I go didn't, for a walk and get some fresh air. I didn't know what to do, <laughs> but I didn't want to go back to that room. And so we <laughs> we were like, okay, let's go get dressed. We'll go to the lobby. We'll get fresh air. So they're like, okay, let's go for a walk. So we go out, and Xavier's live streaming outside, <laughs> and these exhaust fumes, and like five million you people know, are driving by, and, and he's up. like sniffing the fumes, and I'm like, <laughs> you can't go outside. Goes, That's not fresh air. <laughs> so we got in the car, and we went to this beautiful five-story Shangri-La Mall. Shangri-La Mall. 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 They brought us to Texas Roadhouse, <laughs> and I thought of Debbie. <laughs> And it was good food. It was good food. Dad. It was amazing. I was like, food. We're back in America. Yes. Like, they had big steaks. I like had fat steak fries. Were yeah. Crazy oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the the crew busted on a cowboy dance. Yeah. Oh, they had like, like the music started and everyone started up. dancing. Yeah. So then we're in conversation. Nobody had said anything about the hotel rooms, but we're all Me staying. Like. Okay. So then, Pastor Roy said something about. Oh, this mall is attached to a Shangri-La hotel. And I go, what? <laughs> There's a Shangri-La hotel in this vicinity? I go, room's on the house by me. I said, everyone, a room for everybody. I'm like, where's it at? Let's get out of here. Let's go Like, now. we made a beeline so fast. Yeah. And, we and Shern was online. Yeah. Shern was online ordering the rooms. And I'm yeah. like, we don't care how much it costs. Whatever rupees, get whatever. Just get it. But we were, we were delirious, we were tired, we wanted we're to giddy. shower, we were giddy, so we were just like, everything was funny. Xavier had like moved all of our stuff into our sketch room. <laughs> like he just moves into every room, right? I mean, he packs it up just as fast, Unpacks. but then we're, we're basically I wasn't all, going back to the room. She's like, I'm not going back to the room. I can't, room. I can't. So <laughs> the guys went. And packed up all of our packed stuff. Packed everything up in Tristan's room and our room. Yeah. And it was like, we were going on almost 20 hours no I know. sleep, yeah. and we were so Easily. tired. Easily. So we ended up, the guys come back, we finally get into our room, and um, by the way, I ordered a, a Cosmopolitan and a coffee at a five-star restaurant, and it cost me like $8. Eight US dollars. Very cheap. That is so cheap. I was blown away. <laughs> I was blown away. Blown away. She's used to Naples prices. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like going to the Ritz Carlton, being like, "Today's Discount Tuesday. I know, like I know. every drink's five dollars." You know. Yeah. Um, but we ended up having a great time at the hotel. We got to shower and sleep. That was good. And then we woke up the next day, and I think I have. A, oh, I we woke up the right. next day. Oh no! We and went straight to. Okay, I don't know where we were. That. Yeah, I'm um, sure what happened. I'll post did on we Facebook. fly? Where did we go? No, we went to. Okay, we stayed in Manila. We had the Manila envelopes. Yeah, but we had the business conference the next day. Hotel. You skipped it with no, Sherns. That's down below. That's when we went. Oh, to the, okay. Yeah. Well, no, we had the meeting with that family. No, because she didn't oh, come no, to right. the. No. Anyway, it doesn't yeah. matter. They don't care. It's not yeah. chronological. So he owns. Okay, so this little girl next to me, this young lady. She's not little girl. This young lady, she's in, in government, and she was like the right-hand person of the president, who's no longer president, the former president. But she's been in four roles in the government. So she wanted to meet me. She was a commissioner of immigration. Yeah, recently. A second to the president Until six, six months ago, she's yeah. She's also a practicing attorney. Yeah, so now she's opened her own private firm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is her husband, and he owns Rubber Tree Plantation, and FYI, <laughs> he said all of his one. rubber trees provide for Manila envelopes. And we're like, oh, Manila, as in Manila, Philippines. That's why they're called Manila envelopes. I go, I thought Manila was a color. Was a yellow color. I go, you know, Manila, the yellow color envelope? And he's like, no, it's Manila, Philippines. And I go, wow, I learned something new today. So that was our lunch with them. Um, and here's the workshop. Yep. Here. So, so we had a so business workshop. So we arrived at a leadership training academy. That's this place, yes. You didn't put the And the do you it. have a dream thing? Those are everywhere all over this facility. Collaborate, innovate, who are you, yeah. leadership. And so And we had to wake up Oh, that was a Shangri-La, never mind. Yeah. 
Yeah, we wanted to have a nice breakfast, so we came a little late to this. There's the leadership. Okay, so this man on the on the your left is Shern in the red, his business partner, and he's friends with the governor's brother-in-law, who is in the green in the green shirt. striped shirt. So this is the golf course. They wanted us to come and meet him, and he's a Christian. So probably next time we come, we can train politicians with authentic leadership and whatnot. So that was a good, um, great meeting. Great meeting as well that night. Family style dinner. There we go. Okay. Still yes. Yeah. Now we're getting ready to depart. This was when I Marco Polo'd you, Debbie, was here. So then now we flew. What time was that flight? An 8 p.m. flight. Was it? To Bali. Oh, uh, yes. right in the middle but of the night. By the time we got wow. out of immigration, it was 1.30 in the morning. That's right. By the time we got to the hotel, it was oh. 2. Yeah. And, and we passed out. I don't know if you want me to post if, that. If, so he's, if you post of him, then you can post of me. Because <laughs> he was mouth nice. open yeah. sleeping. Yeah. We were passed out in the lobby of this hotel. It took a half hour to get our room keys. Yeah. So the next morning is actually, you're not in chronological order again. No, so The two. high school at 7.30 in the morning. So we get to our hotel at 2. You unpack. It's 3. You go to bed. You wake up at 6. Out the door by to teach at a high school, okay, that's not which possible. isn't here. Sorry, okay, you skipped that. All right, that's fine. It was a lot. Time zone. Then that night, we taught in a church, Destiny Church, and we taught the theology of Jesus. Now, you're in a treat. You're in for a treat because in two weeks, I'm going to teach that to you guys. It's been on my list for six months to teach you guys. You'll never see things the same again after this teaching. So, can you share what's so amazing about Pastor Anki? Okay, this is Pastor Anki, Debbie, right there, and his wife, Shelly. So, he was the interpreter, translator, because they all speak Balinese, whatever, like Bahar, in Indonesia. Yeah. So, they're all Hindus. If you saw Instagram, there's false gods every five feet. Like you like trip and false gods everywhere. It was so funny. Yeah. So this tourist that was selling me something, is I'm like, false is god? that a false god? <laughs> I'm not buying anything with false gods for god my blood. kids. He uh, goes, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a false god on there. I guess you could consider it. Like, nope. Like, do oh I make god. a sale? Do I lie? No, no. <laughs> what do I do? Yeah, it was funny. So, okay, you go ahead and tell the part about the interpreter because you saw it from a different perspective as okay. me. <laughs> so, as, as Tris is up here with Pastor Anki, um, the beautiful thing about this is that he is a, he is a pastor over 11,000 11, churches. Networks throughout in Indonesia, Indonesia. Which, okay. by the way, is the largest concentration of Muslims in the world. <laughs> Not the Middle East. Is Indonesia. Yeah. Indonesia. And this is amazing because for the first time he was translating the theology of Jesus and live streaming to his congregation, to all his people, and essentially telling everyone, everything we've done before this is null. This is now the message moving forward. So this is a pastor over 11,000 churches that was translating the real message. And it was so beautiful to watch this translation happen in, in person because, you know, I knew Trista's reservations being like, I don't know, the translators really got to get this right if this is going to be. But I know to pray, and it's so important because the interpreter is the most important component of the sessions. So I prayed before we did this that we become as one. Yeah. And so the thoughts flowed because on my end you use broken English very simplified to get your point across because now you have half the time to teach as you normally would mm -hmm. so then you share what so every time she would say a line and then Pastor Anki would repeat it in his language and when Trista would say something that was like deep or it just hit <laughs> Pastor Anki would go wow and then, da -da 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 and then and then translate it and he was so hit in the moment by it and 
I don't know. That just was because he was processing it. He's like, <laughs> "You're like this is true. This is right. Where wow. has this been?" Yeah, and he, you could see. So he just had the you could see. I'd look over because we were this close, and I'd put my hand on him to to when I was doing things, and just to see his little the wheel spinning. Yeah. It was amazing. It was he he got it. Yeah, you but stuck him a few He got it. You know, we're used to seeing Trista teach in class, right? She's very thorough. It's it's deep. Yeah, that's different. But when she was on stage and she was preaching, I felt like I was getting like hit in the face. I was like, "Oh, this is good." And when she was done, it was like, "That was amazing." Like, "Oh my gosh." She goes, "You've never heard me preach before. You've always heard me teach." And I'm like, "So, yeah. you guys Mom. have to watch the the session." Grenade. Yeah. yeah, it's recorded we'll and it. it's on um, an unlisted YouTube yeah. link that I'll send you. But the audience determines things too. So, and when it's a fresh audience and they're all Christian, like that makes it even easier. Yeah. In a way. And they're younger. Yeah. Yeah. They're they weren't young. like no. Everybody was young. Everyone's younger than me. Young. Than me and long. yeah, I know. I was like, look at all these guys. They're all. Yeah, they're um, all. Young. They're everywhere. Yep. <laughs> Emil again. Oh, this is Mamma Mia's. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we all we wanted to go back again. We ordered all this food, all of us, like ten of us, yeah. appetizers, food, just ordering, sh- like yeah, let's get that. Watermelon yeah. shakes, yeah. gelato, Sprite. sixty bucks. Yeah, all in, just like yep. no one's looking at price. Just you order all the food you can. I we know. all share it, and sixty bucks. Cheap. And very healthy. Okay. And no bloating. This was fun. Very healthy. No, no We lost. I lost weight. Yeah. I, don't know. I didn't gain a pound. Yeah. Oh, this. Okay. So here we are in Bali, and I was a little apprehensive because when we landed in Bali, <laughs> they're like, "Oh, you're going to teach at a school of theology, a seminary," and I'm like, "Why? Mm-hmm. Why would they want me to come in?" Bible and I said, "They're going to stone me. They're going <laughs> to." I, I I was like. You don't know what you're asking of me. Yeah. Like, this is going to turn their theology upside down, and this is what they study. And what are the lecturers going to do? What are they going to do? Like, I was really concerned. I'm like, are you sure? I was like, oh, we're going to throw elbows. And I go, what do, they, what do they know about me? Like, do they know what I teach? Like, who's, who signed me up for this? Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. So, I was ready to go in and teach Jesus' the theology of Jesus, which, okay, in two weeks we're going to teach. You don't want to miss it. And the, we showed up. I'm getting out of the car. <laughs> and the translator, Pastor Anki, is like, oh, by the way, they want you to teach on authentic leadership. Yeah. Oh, by the way. <laughs> As I'm getting out of the car to go walk inside. And I'm like, right, okay, right. this would have been good information yesterday. Yeah. But all right, no problem. I'll roll with it. Yeah. So we had almost two hours Mm -hmm. they gave me. And I said, perfect. Half hour time me, half hour leadership, and then an hour the theology of Jesus. Yes. And so the leadership, I kind of was like, because I wanted to get to Jesus theology (laughs) so bad. I was like, here you go, here you go, here you go. And then when it got to the, to the, the the theology, these are seminary students. They study the Bible. Okay. So, this was fun for me. Oh, I, I had just had so much fun. You should have the picture on. I had like I swallowed the canary. You should have my favorite picture. Swallowed the canary. Yes. Like I sw- so here's the headmaster of it. He didn't stone me. Good news. So I got to the theology of Jesus, and I was like, just all scriptures in red. This is what Jesus said. Yep. This is his theology, right? Yep. So then he said... I came to, the Son of Man came to save that which was lost. And in Christianity, we say that who was lost. They always quote it wrong. So I had it, I had the big word that. And I said, so what did Adam lose? Because whatever Jesus redeemed, Adam lost. So what did Adam lose? And I said, you tell me. And they sat there, and the lecturer sat there on the front row, and I'm like, come on, guys. I'm like, all right, you tell me. And they're like, huh, like they're thinking. So I made them think the whole, I just didn't give them answers. I made them think. 
watch it and they're like the glory uh the relationship relationship like close and i think someone said Holy Spirit, like one of the lecturers. Someone said the spirit. Like spirit. Someone spirit. The right spirit. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Now let's look. Who can bring their Bible up here and read Genesis 126? Let's see what we lost. Because whatever Adam lost, Jesus redeemed. Yeah. And so they read it. They read it. And I go, wait, what? And it's not in our language. It's not in English. I'm like, what did he say? And he goes, dominion. I go, wait, what? That's what we lost? So that's what Jesus redeemed? So you can see the lectures. And go back to that picture. Which one? And that guy. That's the guy. That guy wouldn't look. Wouldn't at your look stuff. at me the whole time I was teaching. I would look at him. He'd look down. <laughs> and it was very interesting to me. But then when I asked for a volunteer, he wanted to come up and read the scripture. So I had fun with him. And the lecturers. I wish we had a picture of the front row so you can see what I saw. Because <laughs> my view was amazing. That's the seminary school. It was, the cross killed me. It was so much fun. Yeah. I can't. Great. So here's the lecturers all next to Xavier. You see thumbs up. They're smiling. They don't have rocks in their hand. <laughs> Nobody's wanting to stone me. Everyone looks relieved. Yeah. One guy told me that he was relieved. That's the word he used. He did speak very, you know, he spoke a little bit of English, but as we were coming out, um, you know, he thanked me. He thanked me for... Um, for us coming and so he said I am so relieved now that I've heard this he goes I've spent my life thinking that I was just a musician and he goes and now that I realized I am a musician and I was like what instrument do you play he goes I play everything yeah he goes talented. I can play every instrument no very talented and I just <clears throat> encouraged him and I just said you know I said now that you've heard this keep learning it and that's, that's when I gave them their homework. Go back, read the Bible for yourself, mm -hmm. the gospel seven times. Yeah. That's your homework. That's right. And I remember you told me, or Shern said, one of the lecturers on the front row looked at the headmaster in the back row and gave him like, like yeah. this is the, this is the right life. stuff. It was amazing. Like, I was like, okay, I want to hit every seminary school now because <laughs> that was so much fun. <laughs> yes, and I was really apprehensive before I went in. So this was actually that, yeah, this was a high school. And this was started by the pastor that brought Papa Miles in to the big church there in Bali. He started a high school and training leaders. Oh, that's the theme. So they wanted me to come in and teach on leadership. I don't know why this keeps getting stuck. It won't let me move forward. So that's all the children, the high schoolers. Um, Maybe the heart. Yeah. Or the arrow. Over. Ah, up and arrow no, right. The, arrow to the right. No, the right. Or down. There we go. I think these are just stuck a little bit. Okay. Brand new. Shouldn't be. Onky, There's Pastor, Pastor Roy. Roy. Okay. Okay. Which meeting is this? The meeting. Okay. So this is Pastor Paulo, who has a. Uh, Mercy. Oh, it's called Mercy Indonesia. It's an organization. Uh huh. And he's the authority over all of Southeast Asia. So he's over. He said Thailand, Vietnam, Japan, Japan Singapore, Philippines, Singapore. Indonesia, like mm -hmm. the whole Southeast Asia. So he has fifty radio stations, 54. right? Fifty-four mm -hmm. throughout Southeast Asia all over and we came in showed him the authentic leadership book and he kept saying this is the answer he goes this is the answer he said it like four or five times mm -hmm. and he was a director throughout the conversation he goes this is the answer we've been looking for and he was the director for john maxwell's mentorship program down in asia which had recently closed and so for him to see authentic leadership and the school of influence yeah. He was like, we have to get this translated yeah. in every language down here. Yeah. And, um, and then he wants um, the teachings of the kingdom on the radio stations and the teachings of leadership Can on we bring it? all the radio it's stations. Show Debbie. What is that? The Oh, the little audio. She knows. Okay. We have those in storage. <laughs> I don't know. 
Oh, yeah. And he wants the audios on these little devices that they hand out in the villages. Because they're solar powered. Remote, remote areas. So, so they're just audios. All the teachings and everything can go on these audios. Put them on the camera. On the cameras. So we don't have internet access. They're solar powered, so they can charge them. And so they're going to start translating. Did it pop off? Oh. So they're going to start translating the teachings and everything for the radios, for these, the books, the curriculums, everything. Yeah. That was the meeting. He kept looking at the book. You see him on the couch? He kept looking. He's like, this is the answer. Mm -hmm. And he's type A. Like, I can tell. Like, we talk the same language. So we just cut to the chase. We know what to do. Straight shooters. And then finally, the very last day that we flew out, we had a day of rest. We walked to the beach. We went a uh, little shopping. We went, oh, you're out of order again. Mama Mia's. So look, they have little offerings to their false gods on the steps in front of the restaurant we almost stepped Can't on really see, but if you google them on. and you google the offerings it's a it's like a template so the little things we saw oh, yeah. it's, a bowl in there. it's like yeah. you go on google it literally will show you the little bowls that we yeah. saw this won't move like they put weird like grass and like stuff in this like little i don't know what origami do. thing and they like give it to their false god oh and that's it oh that's weird it won't it won't move so that anyway, was our so last day there. Went through the opportunity in Indonesia with like the huge Muslim population. Now in Bali, it's 85% Hindu, 15% Muslim, but the rest of the nation is all Muslim. So there's like 7,000 islands in Indonesia. That's 17. my number. 17,000? He said 17. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> I was like, 17? He goes, yeah. I'm like, whoa. I know. But and they all, all speak different. the same language. <clears throat> no, they're different. No, he told me. I asked him. Uh, his wife said that she's from a different island. They have a different dialect. Different dialect, but it's yeah. the same language. Oh, okay. Just a different dialect. Because I asked him, I said, do we need to do a different translation for the Muslims? He said, no. Oh. It's all the same. Okay. Because I WhatsApped him gotcha. that. No, all no, right. no, no, no. We're good. Wow. So it's only one language for that region. It's kind of like their common language. From what I understand, he, he told yeah. me. So... Um, we thought Philippines was amazing, and then we got to Bali, and it was just so different Maybe. because the false gods are in your face everywhere you go. <laughs> and I was telling them in the church, I'm like, nobody wants to trade one religion for another religion. And that's the beauty. We're not talking about a religion. This is a country, a government. His kingdom has come, and proof of it is dominion power, and you guys operating in power. So stop offering them Christianity. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to trade one religion for another. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, you're right, they don't. I said, they want power. That's what we lost was power. And that's what the Holy Spirit gives you back is power over circumstances. I'm like, that's what you should be out there the as a testimony way. living your life as. And so, which one's that? The Are send you? off, you're signing books in for the airport. Oh, the airport. At, the, at three in the morning. Yep. <laughs> so the, the experience was above, beyond what we could have ever ever imagined mm -hmm. the hunger there is beyond and honestly the weight of the religion of hindu well and christianity too at times but three times a day you're offering and appeasing six million gods mm -hmm. is exhausting yeah. no man can carry that weight mm -hmm. at all that's why they look tired yeah <laughs> Spiritually, they're just like oh, out. like zombies. Yeah, they're worn I out. know. <clears throat> so going through the traditions and the rituals. I mean, all religions have rituals, except you know, thank goodness the kingdom is not a religion. But everyone has their rituals. But these were like, oh my gosh, it's a lot. And then we're like, what do you do with the food and the eggs you bring <laughs> the gods? Like, and they're like, well, it's considered trash. So then you can consume it or something or yeah, yeah. yeah the, you could cook and stuff like with, that, yeah. i don't know uh, it's just you know but this is how it's been for centuries the hindus and the muslims there so god's opened so many doors we met strategically with key people in the region the good thing is the hard work has been done as far as the curriculum so i'm working hard to expedite the kingdom curriculum the app has to be Mwah, because it's still wonky 
-hmm. And so, you know, we had a meeting today, and so we can even have a different one um, regarding the app yeah. and different things so. that we're going to even See? anticipate in the future, too, in with the element. needs that are there, too. So thank goodness we have you with the app and all the capabilities with technology. We're going to get everything translated by the end of this year. Epic, the youth leadership for the kids, authentic leadership for the marketplace. He said the pastors struggling with their identity and power play with their title so nobody gets along. Nobody can get anything done because they're all power playing for position. Yep. And I said, no worries. This addresses that. And I'm like, he's like, this is the answer. So I have a strategy for the nations, which are different strategies when we go next year. So that's what I wanted to say to everybody. What time is it? What time is it? 6.56. Okay, an hour, good. So that's what I wanted to let everybody know. Um, we've had people in the past come on trips, like we've gone to Haiti. Um, we are going again next year for sure, probably same time frame. And anyone can apply to go, but you have to go through School of Influence and come to at least one authentic, I mean, a symposium in order to qualify to come on a trip. And then you can you can submit, which one's that? Oh, you just doing new photos? What, um, what picture do you want me to show? You said. Oh, I ate the canary. <laughs> oh, the canary fruit? I looked like a cat, like Sylvester the cat who ate a canary. I was having so much fun. It was, and the theology of Jesus, the, the slide of the theology of Jesus is in the background. At the seminary? Yeah, mm -hmm. I have it in my phone. I'm like, look at me. I was, I was like, so in my element. This one? I couldn't Is that believe. The canary? It. No, no, that's <laughs> mangosteen. No. At, at the theology school. Debbie, wait she till you try mangosteen. It doesn't look as good as it tastes, but it's <laughs> yummy. Wait, what day are we talking about? Um, theology. The theology school. Bali. So, yeah. um, what was I saying? Oh, for the trip next year. So, those of you who've gone through the School of Influence and come to a symposium, you're eligible to come on a trip. You have to pay your own way, flight, hotel, and stuff, but it's not that expensive there. And so anyway, I know some of you have mentioned you wanted to come. The invitation is there. You just have to be qualified to come. And <laughs> so that you have a year to plan and prepare for it and save the funds for it as well. But it'll be amazing. And we're probably going to go for a longer period of time. I'm thinking three weeks. Um, I'm planning on bringing my family, so even if some of you can join for one week, like just in Indonesia or just in Philippines, Cebu is another island, there's a city, it's not the name of the island, and it's where Blessel's mother lives and where Blessel's from, and they're very hungry for the kingdom there too. So I plan on next year doing kingdom conferences, and so I've, I've admonished Shern in Manila start discipling people. You have the School of Influence, so everyone's going to start Pastor Anki discipling people with the kingdom. And it seems there's, it's so much easier when you have people like Pastor Roy and Rochelle who have been discipling people with the kingdom and the School of Influence for three, four years. Then we come in and we just support what they're doing, empower them and encourage them. And they just, it just makes the biggest difference in the yeah. world. Yeah. You're not pulling teeth. You're just, they're no. like... How does Pastor Roy then make all the connections with uh, people in Bali and arrange all those? They, they, were, they used to be part of the same church network. But they were open to the kingdom message. No. They booted they got, him out. They booted him out. They booted him out, right? Yeah. But when Pastor Roy was arranging all of this, yes. the doors were open for him to bring you in. Oh, yeah. So he had all those connections. He, oh, yeah. He had because not all of them have kingdom. Right. right. But he's been sharing the kingdom with some of them, yes. So it was really, his connections were Pastor Anki in Indonesia, and then um, the manager of the hotel there, who was, he was discipling, part of the discipleship group, who then connected me to the hotel chain in Manila, and then Shern with his business partner, and they wanted, and he was very familiar with the Miles Monroe. So when Miles Monroe had gone, I think, Bali twice before, he has a very good name reputation. So when people heard, oh, Trist is a protege of Master, Pastor Miles, they're like, oh my gosh, he's gone. There's somebody that teaches what he taught. So that went a long way too in some circles, in, in some 
places, yeah. definitely, for sure. Probably in most of them. Yeah, there were Except, there. like, the past. How about Apollo? How did he get? Pastor Apollo? Yeah, how did he get? He, he uh, um, Pastor Anki worked, him and his wife worked for him for 15 years. Yeah. So they're all in the same city. But he was there when Miles was there and heard him. He's like, oh, my gosh, are you yeah. kidding me? He trained you. That's what's in here. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. He just came from a conference in Florida. In West Palm Beach. In West Palm Beach. There we go. I was talking about. Yeah. Rest. Okay, that's in the Shangri-La. We yeah. had a good time. Rest. I don't know what I mean, you're talking about. I don't it's know. at the seminary. You weren't eating anything at the seminary. No. She's talking I about was the good <laughs> look. Like she just ate canary like... I was like, we didn't eat anything. <laughs> and I'm looking for food pictures. <laughs> Did the same here before. Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you're too, you're too I don't even know. Okay, now that okay, now I get it. That's a seminary. Okay, totally there, yeah, it's close to there. Yeah, I think that's it. Is that the one? Is that the one? No, no. no. I think it's the one. It was so hot. I had to put my hair. I think that was it. You can tell I'm having a good time. No, no. I think you had it up. Yeah. And it looked like I ate it. Like I was having the best time messing with their minds, yeah. like messing with it, like challenging. Where do you get your ideas from? Yeah. And like that seminary. was where's your source of your ideas? And they're in a seminary. Read like, your Bible for yourself. What's the Bible say about this? What's it say? And they're like, eh? and I'm like, you're the students of the Bible. You tell me. And I kept challenging them. Well, that was that was a different. That was yeah. Very much getting challenged. I was having fun there too. Here we go. Uh, that was with Pastor Anki. Okay. I took so many. No, times. you had it up. You had it up. So anyway, the good news is Pastor Paulo, who's head of Southeast <clears throat> Asia, he was just in West Palm Beach for a big network conference. All the big people from around the world that are in church affiliations and networks. They come together once a year and they're like, we have a problem. The church growth is only 1.5% mm. and it's shrinking and the population is growing faster than the church. And the church growth is not real growth because it's people running from one church to another, mm. which has been going on since the beginning yeah. of time, yeah. you know, since I was little anyway. And so I'm listening to talk and we're listening to him talk and then I'm like, you know, sounds like a good problem to me. Number one, what are they selling? Is it Christianity? Is it a religion? Sounds like nobody wants it. So why are you beating a dead horse? I didn't say beating a dead horse, but I was like, this sounds like a good problem to me because we come in with a kingdom and that's problem solved. We're not trying to get them into a denomination, but a kingdom. And so he's like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Didn't expect that. Yeah, Mm-mm. it was good. Yeah. So then we just got to the chase after yeah. that. Yep, that was it. So that was good. So it was amazing, the connections. We didn't have to force doors open. God just went before us, made connections happen. This, and you guys have to understand how important the airwaves are because the devil's called the prince of the air, right? We all know that. Whoever controls the media controls a nation. And I did a whole teaching on it. I'll find it for you on YouTube. And I'm like, oh my gosh, God is giving us the airwaves in all of Southeast Asia. No, and it's the kingdom message. It's not religion. So it's going to be so contrary to everything they're hearing. Mm -hmm. It's going to stand out like a sore thumb. And even the leadership philosophy too. Mm -hmm. And I know they like John Maxwell. If they like John Maxwell, they'll like this. They're going to love it. Right? And Hindus like Christians. They don't hate them. No. They they want to appease all the gods. They don't like Including our gods. But they like the Christians. Because the bomb that went off in 2001 from an Islam Muslim terrorist. That's it. They were like, you know what? So the Christians, they like Christian people because they like Jesus. They yeah. just think of him as like a great a prophet. Teacher, prophet. Yeah. So, you know, Hindu and Christian get along. Muslims and Hindus, they don't get along. So. Uh, this is special because <clears throat> this young lady, she also is a retail manager and uh, does human resources and training development. So she said that um, my business panel really connected with her, but she asked if I'd leave her some parting words. And I thought it was cool to write her parting words on the notebook that I designed. Um, I had, I was so tired. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, but it was just like, 
I just can't explain like when people come up to you and you know they're like the things you say are so inspiring and I'm so moved and you know I learned so much and you know I don't want to like let this moment go I just thought it was really special but we're seeing the evidence of the teachings and the trainings in their lives the people starting businesses that their lives were, were changed and there everyone's like this book was because of the school of influence this marriage was because of the, this business like all these ideas brainchilds yeah they're called was, brainchilds they ask it in oh my leadership. gosh it's and so good so encouraging mm -hmm. for sure you just want a population that gets it yes right and they so they have like in their managers huddle they call one of yes. their home groups but they're not in the homes like they meet in the church too some meet in homes some in businesses and things oh, they um the muslims come mm -hmm. to them mm -hmm. so they're training the muslims they're attracting they them. love the school of influence how is roy teaching so he's got his his leadership team that he teaches yeah and they teach i believe so I believe so. Like some of them have, because like, there's only so much space. Not, <clears throat> there's only so much space in the hotel in so that room. They meet in coffee shops and they show us pictures. Like mm -hmm. each each mentee, so you have the leaders of like Roy, like his mentees and their mentees. The mentee, the leaders' mentees, they have met like they're starting to mentee like 30, 40 mm -hmm. kids at a time. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? Like they're all like, oh, we meet here, we meet there, we meet here. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, like so you have like. It's crazy, and they, he doesn't tell them to. He goes, no, no, I just right. let them. They just do it. And they just do it, and I was like, wow. In their own creative way. In their own way. He does not yeah. at all tell them how to do and it. that's just based on Roy's foundation of teaching women. Everything he yes. yeah. from you and my Yeah. Yeah. And he's teaching exactly what we do. Imagine yeah. I know. In their hands I know. Like, a fire. like as yes. soon as they graduate, they just go up and start mentoring. Yeah. They don't right. like. They have, Boom. I mean, mind-blowing, yeah. because they just have generational-type information that's being passed down from, her, yeah. from Roy. Their mentality is really community. Yeah. As a, as a, as a mm -hmm. nation of Philippines, yeah. Phil they, they really think cultural, so it's, they're, and they're, they're Spanish. They're not Asian. They are yeah, Spanish descent. Spanish. Spanish. We learned I'm that. I'm like, wait a minute, because there's wordings around the Philippines that are in Spanish. I'm going, wait a minute, that's Spanish. So I started catching on because Spain had uh, colonized, colonized them for 300 years. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? So they're Spanish <laughs> islanders. I was like, got it. Now, Roy is Chinese. His grandfather was Chinese. Grandfather's Chinese and, and mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, Rochelle and all them, they're Spanish. They, they, I'm like, you guys picture. look like y'all like Latin. And then they told me the story of them being co colonized by Spain. I said, so they're basically Spanish co um, islanders. I was very... So. Is that your hotel? No. <laughs> yeah. This is in the uh, Philippines. No. <laughs> you know, I was like, I go, who? That's funny. Do they pay taxes around here? Like asking them all kinds of questions. Like, who pays taxes? And How their, does this all work? Their mayor or their president oh, yeah, in Davo. Yes. So Davo used to be like, yes. like the Wild Wild West, the killings, everything. So the mayor, when he got elected, he, he used to be a taxi driver. He would yeah. even go and pick up, like he's a taxi driver, pick up the criminals and take them to the police station. As a taxi driver, he's like, oh yeah, come on, come on. Up crime he literally himself. cleaned it up himself and got it all. So now people are moving to Davao yeah. because it's like a peaceful city. It's considered like one of the safest towns. They got yeah. rid of the rebels. Debbie, yeah. all the problems we see in Haiti, <clears throat> they solved they them. They solved it. All of them. The leader Even is. the resources that are there, the gold mines, everything Haiti has, yeah. the rebels, the rioting, everything. They got rid of it. They, they solved it all. Done. Okay, yeah. we're take care of this first. Now let's try to build the city. It was amazing. It yeah, it was crazy. They said yeah. that you can't even smoke in Davao, right? Can you smoke yeah, cigarettes? it's illegal to and, smoke cigarettes. And the, there's <laughs> yeah. a man who was made an example of. So there was He was a, Haitian. Korean. No. They said he was Korean. Oh, I thought they said Haitian. No, so this... this man doesn't matter what ethnicity he is but he comes into a restaurant and he's smoking a cigarette and the owner goes and says you know sir i'm sorry you can't smoke in here like there's no smoking anywhere in this area and the guy was very arrogant and just kind of blew him off and so they went back and they were like listen you can't smoke here i'm sorry the guy was arrogant blow him off well he didn't know that the owner knew the president 
So he calls the president and tells him, hey, this guy's in my restaurant, he's smoking. The president comes down himself, pulls a cigarette out of his mouth, shoves it back into his mouth, and made him, and made him eat it, and said, there is no smoking in anywhere in Davao. And that guy literally has been made an example of in the whole town. <laughs> and I just think, wow, what a regulator. Like, my grandfather would pull something like that, you know? Yeah, military style. Very much so, you know? And so I just thought, wow. So, so you know, it looks, it looks, you know, iffy, but they definitely are very community, you know? He said, people will tell you in the street, hey, you can't do that. That's mm -hmm, against the law. Mm -hmm. And they are gracious to you, but if you're like, wow, I can do whatever I want, then they're like, yeah, oh, you're going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so overall, how would you <clears throat> assess the trip? Xavier, then we'll go to Deja. I'm tired, so I'm not going to go too long. It was, my, it was definitely life-changing. Um, was it? It was, literally. <laughs> life-changing. You guys are going to, uh, there's a reason why she said that. <laughs> But anyways, it was definitely beyond our expectations. It definitely um, impressed us on how um, hungry and disciplined that they want to be and that they are. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, they're just, um, it was, it's nothing you would think. Oh, sorry. So, um, yeah, the hunger itself is very intoxicating. So I kind of, I'm not a prophet, but I was like, okay, you guys are going to actually lead the way. They're going to be the ones that are going to spearhead that whole movement because they already got everything mm -hmm. um, together to do that. They're, they're already... They've been formally trained. Yeah. Per, I mean, just... And that's the key. That's the key. They've been trained very well. Like, Roy and Michelle have done a great job mm -hmm. at training them. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I believe that they are going to be the ones. And I think that's why we were brought there to kind of like help facilitate that and reinforce it. And, you know, that's something that when God gives you something like that, you have to take very serious. So that's kind of like, I was like, whoa, like, wait, because I saw it when I got there, the minute I got there, I was like, no, no, please. Okay, because it's a big responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I saw it the whole trip, and I just kept observing everything, and it, everything just was lining up, and the doors were, it was like just walking through every door as it was open for you, just go, just, you didn't have to resist, we didn't resist nothing. It just went, do, 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 the whole sense. trip to the, to we got back on the plane. And our brains are just like, okay, well. Even in the airport, they didn't even ask <clears> us. We had to go get tested for COVID. Oh. No one asked us for nothing. I was like, what a waste. What I a waste mean, it of yeah. And money and and, <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything was, they were like, oh, you're good, you're yeah, good. No, the, cool. no one made a big deal about it. Yeah. One thing I want to address that I forgot to mention, when we got to Singapore, our first leg over, we were like, what kind of problems are you guys having? Right. And they're like, fatherlessness. Oh. The men just want babies to carry on their name, but they don't want to be a father. Mm. And the LGBTQ dealio. Which I, I have, I know. So we off. saw oh, things. <laughs> so it was very interesting that they're dealing with the same global situations that we all are in their culture it's global it's everywhere yeah that's so that's why even in the curriculum after this one the national school of influence i'm putting some strategic teachings in there to address some of these things okay deja give us an assessment uh, two weeks for you <clears throat> so um well it was my first real international trip mm -hmm. Right, I don't consider going to Mexico <laughs> when I was 30. Oh. <laughs> I don't consider going to Cancun <laughs> to be internationally traveling, um, and nor do I consider going to Germany when I was six, international traveling. So this was technically my first time, and it exceeded my expectations. Um, and to be honest with you, I just I have a lot to think about and to marinate on as far as just like the life I want to live. <laughs> Um, you know, my heart is in Bali and is with the vision for Southeast Asia. And that really became apparent on this trip. So I wasn't expecting 
uh, a lot of life changes, but they are obviously starting to happen. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that I think that we are going to be international consultants and trainers in the next season. So, um, but it was an amazing experience. It really broadened my horizons. It really showed me that although we think we have the greatest country in the world, it's just we have not, a lot to learn from them. We have a lot to learn, and I kept saying to these people in a developing nation yeah. who look to America and think, oh, you guys have it so great. We want to come to America so we can have the same opportunities. And I just told them, I'm like, don't get too caught up with this move to America because I said, it's, it's not what you think it is. And when you really go over there, what I saw was, although we don't have, they don't have what we call first world luxuries, kind of in a way, but their luxuries are in such a different way, you they're know? Rich other they're areas. rich in other areas. So like, you know, the food, they're not being poisoned through food. They're not being poisoned through healthcare. They're not being poisoned through education, right? These are things that we're being poisoned by constantly. And going over there, it was like, didn't think about it, didn't even cross my mind because we're sitting around here around hundreds of people who are just hungry for the real meat of life. And it's yeah, almost cool. as if the yeah. things that we oh. think are problems here are literally on the ground. And so there was just a huge perspective adjustment for me personally. Um, and yeah, I, I can see how my political campaign prepared me for the next season. Um, I'm really glad that I didn't get elected now that I've been across the world because had I been elected, I would be here and not possibly putting out of going to Bali and Indonesia and throughout Southeast Asia. So it's just been a lot. It's been a lot to process um, and I have a lot more to still process. But we have a lot of work to do now. So yeah. now seeing so much hunger and seeing the fruit of all the labor, like writing the new curriculums, you know, Trista wants to publish another book. I've got a book to publish. We've got a lot of things to get transcribed and translated. So I think that uh, I'll be in my little hermit crab shell for a while because I'll be producing. working day and night producing. <laughs> We'll see fire coming from your condo, yeah. your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> but it was amazing. I loved it. I'm so glad I got to experience it. Um, I'm journaling about it right now because I don't want to forget about this. Thank you, Debbie, for the advice. We should journal this. I had no time. We had no time. Impossible. I mean, literally, I just, like, impossible. literally just impossible. Just got to and get up and go. Sweet yeah. and get up and go. No, because the internet was, and then crazy. you know. No. We'd go to bed so late, get up early, and yeah, teach all day, was, all day, all day, all day. Yeah. No. So it was impossible, but um, can't wait to go back. No. 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 All right, I'm going to finish with this scripture. Isaiah 9, 6, let me see, and 9, 7. 9, 7. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. And upon the throne of David <clears throat> and upon his kingdom to order and to establish it with justice and with justice from henceforth even forever. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So the zeal of God will advance his kingdom and the work that he wants accomplished. The problem is, and I'll leave it with this, here's the problem. The harvest is ripe. But the quality of laborers is the issue. So pray to the Lord of the harvest for the laborers. That's the problem. Quality. Quality of laborers that have passed the test, gone through the process, properly trained, mentored, and can be released. executed yep. and released. That's the problem. Mm. Yep. Coop. Mic drop. <laughs> and that concludes. And we'll see, see you at the, the top. top. <laughs> That's all Ooh, Pastor Roy would say. Okay. Good seeing everybody. And now. Oh, Philippines is.
is online. Yes, oh, we will see you next online. year. <laughs> Thank you, Messina, Coming for posting so the scriptures. Good girl. That's my girl. She's always on top of it. Love you guys.